yes you can see. okay fine okay hello everyone so uh, my name is sanjay best and i'm going to discuss with you all today about the aws some basics about the aws what it is so uh, just before we start uh, can i have the expectations from you uh, about the uh, about this training if you have something in your mind what do you expect uh, from this training anyone uh yes sir yes sir yeah i am expecting to route 53 uh, uh one type of policies and what is what okay uh yes uh, okay gonna... so so uh just a disclaimer here so uh as you uh know this is the first training for aws that we are imparting here so uh this training will give you uh the brief idea about what is AWS and uh, how can you start learning about the AWS? How can you create your account? Uh, give you some idea about the some common services that are present in the AWS and giving you the high level uh, idea about the AWS. So, Route 53, as you mentioned, it's one of a specific service, one of the advanced services that is used by AWS. So, uh, in this particular course, we are not going to cover uh, that kind of services in detail. Okay. At least the seven type of policies will be explained in this class. Yeah, so uh, I will be discussing about some of the services uh, that we will see uh, going forward. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh, let's start. So uh, this is the agenda that uh, basically I'm going to cover in today's session. So uh, something about cloud the global infrastructure about the aws how the billing is done uh, aws account means how you can create your own account uh, in aws to play around with the aws services uh, a specific type of service that aws is providing iam for the user management and we will discuss about these two services the ec2 and st3 s3 Okay, so first about the cloud. So um, before we go to AWS, so let's see uh, what cloud actually means. So uh, I assume we have some of the audience which are uh, very new to this technology AWS. So for them, basically uh, to let them know about the cloud technology. So uh, cloud is basically a concept which says that there are some services present somewhere, uh, you can assume on the cloud that anybody can access as per his or her need so it's basically cloud means you have some of the resources which you can avail on demand basis whenever you need the best thing about the it uh, about the cloud concept is that the resources you are not going to manage those for example when you uh, create a linux machine prior to cloud cloud concept you buy a linux machine you have to do the patching for that you have to manage the antivirus for that all the things you have to manage but with the cloud concept we you do not have to manage the resources as as such and the resources are shared so uh, just a disclaimer here so shared uh, in cloud most of the services are shared but if the uh, if there is a need from a specific customer uh, that they do not want to share a resource for example if there is a government organization which needs a server which should be dedicated due to security compliances so they can use some resources for their own also but most of the time it is a shared resource that we use from the cloud and the uh, the next main point is pay as you go so it is basically you do not have to you have different options for the payment but it is like as you use the services uh, for only for that particular amount of the usage you have to pay for it okay any questions for any of the points okay i consider it as no okay so and so what is aws then so aws is basically a cloud service that is provided by amazon 
so not only aws is providing the cloud services there are other vendors also you might know uh, there are there is a gcp which is the cloud provided by google there is azure which is the cloud provided by the microsoft Okay, so if you go forward for the AWS global infrastructure, so how AWS is globally present across the globe. So in AWS, we have two concepts. Uh, one is called region and the second is called availability zone. So as you see from the diagram in the whole AWS concept, we have different regions and each region has two or more availability zones. So what is the reason? So reason is nothing but the glow, uh, geographical presence of AWS across the earth. So for example, there is if there is a if, if we say we have a region in India, so that means we have some data centers of AWS in India, which is currently in Mumbai. Uh, in India, we have only one uh, region that is Mumbai. Second thing is availability zone. So what is an availability zone? So availability zone is basically a data center. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows what a data center is. Okay, I assume that as, what should I assume? Yes or no? <laughs> so, uh, um, so this. Okay, so basically a data center is uh, uh, a room, you can say, where you have lots of servers and servers have lots of your disk spaces, devices, routers, switches, etc. So availability zone is nothing but a data center. Uh, it's actually a building in which you have the servers and the data centers that are connected with each other with the very high connecting um, uh, network bandwidth. So uh, for example, if you see, uh, I have a reason here. So in this reason, we have three availability zones. So every reason has two or more availability zones. So the idea here is basically, if you see, let's say in Mumbai, we have a region. And in Mumbai itself, we have three different availability zones. So you can say one availability zone in Andheri East, just a random name uh, of a place and second availability zone in in on the west and those two uh, availability zones are were connected with the high level data cables for the high network speed and the why why it, it has been done like that any guesses Okay, so availability zones, uh, so dif keep different availability zones in a same, uh, particular reason. The concept behind is that if due to some reason, one of the availability zone goes down uh, due to some out outage or due to some earthquake or something like that, the second availability zone should be able to uh, handle all the requests for the customers that are in that availability zone. Okay, and this, Third point, uh, the third main term that is used in AWS about the uh, infrastructure is called the edge locations. So um, edge location is definitely different from availability zone in a way that edge location is used mainly for the caching of the contents. So for example, if we have um, around 60 availability zones, then uh, the edge locations might be around 100 or 250 across the globe. So the main uh, idea to have the edge locations is to provide the customers uh, with the quick access to some of the contents. So it is mainly used for the web pages. It's, it's kind of a caching that is used by the AWS. Okay, and uh, this is basically the pre pictorial presentation of the regions and the uh, across the globe. So all the blue dots that you are seeing are the regions that are presently present in uh, across the world. And the orange ones are the ones that are proposed by AWS uh, that they are going to create new availabilities or uh, new regions. So if you see in India, uh, we have already a region in, in Mumbai. And this, I think it's somewhere in Hyderabad, they are 
uh, uh, they are planning to uh, create a new region. Yeah, Sanjay, please also explain the edge location. Yes, you tell me. Yeah. So basically, edge edge location are AWS has created some uh, some locations which are near the customers. So for example, in Mumbai, uh, let's say you have one location in Andheri East availability zone. Okay. And they have created three different edges edge, edge locations in Andheri East only. And each of the location is at a different place to serve to their uh, customer, whoever is near to them. Uh, yeah. is, okay. does, does that answer your question? Um, so as so as locations, you can say that these are the locations which are near to our end customers, uh, which can use the caching concept to uh, to access the HTMLs or the images uh, or the S3 contents. So something like those. So availability zones uh, and edge locations are different in a way that availability zones have uh, full fledged data centers, which has routers, all the all the all the services. And as, as locations is used only for the contents, for the pages. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. Okay. So the next point is regarding the AWS account. So it is very important for uh, everyone who wants to learn about the AWS rather than reading the theory. It's always good to get your hands dirty and go play with the AWS account. So for that, what AWS is doing, they are providing some free tier uh, services that you can use uh, free of cost. And you will be able to create an account for yourself also on the AWS. So I have put in this in this presentation uh, a document with that that will help you to create your own account. Uh, can you see that? Okay, maybe I need to change the mode of sub presentation. Just a minute. Let me know if you see my screen and you see, see a PDF document. Yes. Okay. So uh, I have created a. I have tried to create a document to um, show these steps how to create a AWS account. Uh, I could not find anything ready made uh, on the on the web, so I prepared it myself. So what what you need to do to create your own account? Basically, you need to go to this link aws.amazon.com. Uh, okay and and from there uh, you just need to follow these steps you need to uh, sign in a, as a root user provide your email and then create a new aws account the second step um, it will ask for a confirmation of a verification that has been sent to your mail you provide the verification code you set a password for the root account Okay, then some uh, information about yourself. So provide the correct information for the phone number and the email because those were used uh, to, for the verification codes. And then it will ask for your uh, credit card. So uh, to set up an AWS account, you need to provide a valid card information uh, because during the account, creation uh, AWS verifies whether the um, account holder whoever is creating the AWS account has a valid credit card or not because all the payments will be done by that card only okay so that is uh, that is mandatory and when you, you set up uh, for the first time it will uh, charge you two rupees I mean it is just a very small amount just to uh, verify that uh, AWS is able to uh, deduct the billing account amount from your card. Okay, so I have used this, so it, it is showing me access, but it may be different from different users. 
so once that is done uh, it will use the sms or the verification code for your no phone number so, so that's why it is very important to provide the correct email id and the phone number the valid ones and then you uh, will be provided with three options what support you need basic developer or business there is one more uh, so uh, for your free account you choose the basic support which is basically free you, of course you will not be provided with any support by the aws in case you have some query and then your aws account will be created so any questions for for these steps okay i consider that as no uh so regarding the billing uh, so don't worry i will we will uh, go to the aws account also and see some of these the, the services uh, in aws so uh, regarding the billing plan uh, the billing provided by aws is based on these concepts so pay as you go so that is one of the basic concept of the cloud um, billing strategy so whatever you use for how long you use uh, only for that much amount you have to pay it save when you get when you commit so this is basically uh, what does it means uh, if you are committed to a service for example if you want to take a server ec2 server linux machine uh, if you are committed to take it for six months there will be a charge let's say it is hundred uh, hundred dollars for for six months but if you say you are committed to uh, acquire it for one year so it should be uh, 600 into two it should be 1200 uh, dollars for one year but what aws says if, if you take it for a complete year so you may have to pay only thousand uh, dollars so they will give you discount if you commit for a longer period pay less by using more so which means if one ec2 is, is for x so two ec2 does not mean that it is 2x it will be definitely less than 2x so more you uh, more you use the less you pay and it's it's not only for the ec2 uh, i mean it's not only for a service as such uh, for example, there is a service called S, uh, SNS for the notification services. So what they say, if you use a thousand notifications, then the charge is X. But if you use 2000 notification, the charge is not 2X, it will be less than 2X. So that kind of uh, concept they are using. Uh, when you use more, you pay less. Uh, second thing for our... Uh, Basically, if we are trying to use the AWS for the first time for uh, any of the account, what we can use is, is something called uh, AWS pricing calculator. So uh, what does it do is basically it estimates the cost for your architecture. So uh, for example, if you are setting up a new uh, project uh, or, or a new application in, in AWS, and uh, you want to use a s3 bucket so s3 is nothing but a, a folder structure in aws uh, so so if you want to use an s3 bucket and you know that um, the number of files i have is should be around 10 gb and uh, the type of storage uh, that i will be using is a standard storage so uh, you will put your different uh, parameters there and you press calculate and the AWS will give you the estimate how much it will cost you for that much duration of time. So based on that calculations, you can do some kind of, you can take some kind of decisions for your project, whether we should use uh, S3 standard or S3 infrequent access. Like uh, for example, in AWS for S3 buckets, you have different kinds of buckets. So one bucket is standard, uh, which means whenever you want to use a file, you can go and use the file. And second is something called uh, S3 infrequent use. So infrequent use is a little bit less and it, it charges uh, less as well. Then you have something called Glacier, which is a kind of an archive. So 
if you want to use the put a file in a glacier you will not be able to access it immediately it will require around uh, four hours six hours up to two days depending on the what kind of glacier it is so based on that you can choose whatever s3 bucket we want to use and put that in your uh, pricing calculator and uh, you calculate what price it should cost you and based on that you can take some decisions where which kind of bucket we should use so, so that's only if, uh, just an example for s3 bucket you can use same thing for the vpc route 53 or your ec2 machines everything else then there is another thing uh, in aws that is called aws budgets so it is nothing but it's a kind of an alarm system that you can configure in uh, AWS and you set some budgets like my, my budget for this month is a thousand euros or thousand dollars and uh, when the your consumption of the billing approaches that amount so AWS sends you alerts that your budget is exceeding okay any questions about billing okay uh so uh, when you see this is the kind of a dashboard that you see uh when you uh, click this link uh, in the aws so it shows you uh, what's your cost what are the different services that you have used what is the amount of each service usage so based on this also you can take some uh, some decisions for the future usages which services i am using more how, how I can optimize uh, my AWS usage to, to minimize the cost. Regarding the support plans uh, for, the, for the AWS usage, so AWS is currently providing four types of support plans. So uh, just a point of question here, support plans, uh, okay, do, can anybody tell me what's the difference between support plan and the cost that we are uh, mentioning? That for S3 bucket for thousand uh, for one GB usage one thousand dollar so that kind of cost and this support plan. What's the difference between these two? Hello, anyone? Yeah. So hi, hi, Sunday. So support plan, I guess, I mean, if you face any issue in the S3 bucket, then I guess, you know, whatever support is required from AWS and I guess they will provide that. Yes, exactly. Absolutely correct. So so support plan, as the name said, it's uh, the cost when a support is required. And the uh, other billing is basically for the resources that you are using. So for example, uh, I may take a basic support plan and I may use a S3 bucket that is costing me 10 10 dollars or something like that so totally correct thank you uh, so basically we have four kind of different uh, support plans here so basic um, of course basic is basic nothing is charged and, and nothing is supported and you can read through uh, it's basically the more you pay the more um, support is provided by the uh, by aws Okay, uh, it is not mentioned somewhere here, but uh, in okay. So uh, in enterprise, the main main thing is that you have uh, a dedicated team. Uh, I mean, it should not be dedicated team for your account, but it's a dedicated team which is supporting few accounts that whenever there is a need, uh, they will be uh, present for the support. So that is provided only for the enterprise support plan. You can say it's, it's a spark, spark for your account. Whenever you have a problem, you can directly ping that uh, person for the support. OK. Uh, OK, so uh, at this moment, let's go to the AWS account and see some of the features. For AWS, you need to go to it. So, it, is this screen visible or should I zoom it? It's okay. 
can zoom in little bit. Okay. Better. You need to provide sign into console. And this is the screen uh, that we has seen the first screen from where we created a new account. So once your account is created, just uh, click on the root user, then provide your uh, email address. Just a minute, I need to pause. Okay, so I just just provided the password and uh, enter. So here I am in this uh, in my console. So if you see from here, if, if when I go to billing dashboard, so here you will see the the usage. So currently my account uh, does not have anything uh, that is billable. So that's why it is blank. So, okay, so this is basically the AWS pricing calculator that uh, I was discussing. So from here, you go to create estimate and you say that, for example, if you want to do something for S3, S3 bucket, configure, you say that you want to use a bucket in a particular region. So uh, for AWS, for some of the services, the cost is different in the regions. Uh, as, per, as per the reasons so you choose a reason where you want to use the bucket I, I say I'm using in this Ohio location for the s3 standard uh, my per month GB is for example I say thousand GB I'm going to use and for now I use only this thing and it will show me that you will be uh, build 23 usd for using s3 bucket for cap for storing 1000 gb for one month in ohio region so based on that you can see the calculations how it is done so similarly you can do it for any of the of your services if if, if i use I, I say i'm not going to use s3 i am going to use infrequent access that means my files will be less frequently used and I say I am using the same amount for the 1000 GB. So the amount will be 12.5. So it, it's exactly half. So similarly, I can use other uh, type of buckets, S3 buckets. So this is how you can use the pricing calculator. Okay, let's let's go to one of the important services that is IEM. Uh, so basically why, why I have kept IEM uh, is for discussion is basically the user that you create by default when you are creating a aws account it's your root user and root user uh, has the super user kind of permissions for your account you can do anything 
for your account by using that user. So a good practice is that we should never use a root user for doing any of the operations. It's, it's not only for the AWS, it's a common concept wherever you go for a machine, for database, everywhere. So you should not use a root user or a super user for any of the operations. So what you should do um, as soon as you have the account, you should create one of the user for your day-to-day uh, -day activities. So that's why I have kept this uh, IEM uh, module service here. So you go to IEM. Uh, okay, so just before that, if somebody is new to this AWS console, so you, uh, you, if you want to use any of the service of the AWS, you can just type the name here. Or if you know the what kind of services that you can go to the uh, the link kind of a link here and from there you can choose whatever kind of service you want to use forever. For example, for storage, you have different kind of storages and the storage we will see is S3 also. So from here I have uh, first IEM and I when I click on it, I come to here. Okay. So from IEM go to users and currently there is no user here. So I want to add a user. And I am creating a user with this name. I'm using user with a password. Uh, there is another method which says uh, access key program programmatic access. So this is basically another kind of uh, user you can create uh, for the cases where you can use the access through CLI. So AWS also has a, a everyone knows what is a CLI. CLI is basically command line interface. So uh, anyone who does not know about CLI? Hello, yes, no. Okay, so I, I assume everybody knows what the CLI is. So if you want to use a user, for example, I want to use this SBIST user in my CLI commands also. So I, I need to uh, check this box also. So for that, for now, I'm using it only as a username and password. So I'm keeping, uh, for this case, I'm keeping the password, simple password. Uh, for example, I can say, Yeah. Since the password does not contain the Okay, I am creating a particular group on this thing, uh, S3 read. So uh, I'm using S3 read only access. I'm assigning that group to this user. Next, I do not want to use any key. Okay. 
okay and now i have created this user let me sign out Okay, every account has a unique 12 digit code that you need to provide uh, whenever a user has to log in with a particular, uh, when an IEM user has to log in. A root user can, uh, can log in without that, but for a IEM user, you have to provide that account ID. So, And this is basically that account ID that you need to provide. So now you have to click I am user. Then the count ID. And there you go. Now, uh, now I am connected as as that particular user. Okay, and with that user, if I go to IAM, because this user only has a uh, access for reading the S3 bucket. So if if I now if, if now I go to the IAM dashboard, I I am not able to do anything so that's why it is recommended that whenever you want to do any specific operation even for your account you should do it with your particular user okay any questions for uh, for iam is it clear Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so is it is it clear the IEM because some of the uh, uh, assignment will be based on that. You are clear about I I I IEM creation. Bolo bhai. Yes, yes, okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So um so so basically as as part of the assignment, um the two things are very important for you to know. One is uh, you should be able to create a AWS account for yourself, and second is you should be able to create uh, a user. Okay, so let's let's proceed further. Okay, so uh, the other thing is is also related to the AWS account only. So let me switch back to the root user account.
okay so basically i want to show you about two uh, services i planned for ec2 and s3 uh, if there is anything else any specific service you want to know you can let tell me uh, else we can continue with ec2 okay so uh, from the console uh, just just search here type here ec2 and go to the uh, ec2 it will be the dashboard for the ec2 ec2 is uh, basically uh, you can say it it's a machine a server that you can use for your application or your deployment something like that uh, no, apart from the usage of databases for database you have rds some some other service uh, that you use for databases for uh, other than databases purposes you can use ec2 machine so currently if you see there is uh, no instances running so we go to launch instances And AWS provides two different AMIs. Uh, these are the machine images uh, which will be used to create your EC2 machine. And if you see here, you have different uh, images uh, for which you can create. Out of these, you see some are uh, free tier eligible. So if you use these machines, you will not be charged uh, anything for usage. So let's take the first one. then each machine uh, so that is the image the base the os version etc after that you have to choose what kind of machine it will be how powerful it will be like how many cpus it will have what will be the memory etc so if you see here uh, everything is chargeable only for the t2 micro is eligible for free tier so use that it will be fair enough to use for your uh, learning purposes and even if you want to create a small project uh, you can use it then you have uh, to choose how many instances uh, you require number of instances the different details uh, we are not going to detail not going into the details of these uh, in this particular course basically and just see and add storage uh, storage is basically your uh, hard disk how much space you will require for that tax you can uh, add tag to your machine it's simply like if you have thousands of ec2 machines you can tag those machines with your uh, applications or with your kind of usages you can use the tax security group uh, so every ec2 machine in an aws environment is behind a security group and security group is a kind of a firewall uh, which where you can set the rules who all can access the uh, ec2 machine so that's why uh, selecting a security group is is must so so here uh, it is automatically by default it's creating a security group for this particular ec2 machine so then review and then launch. Uh, so this is a uh, key pair is basically a uh, kind of a credentials uh, that can be used to access directly into this machine. So for now, I am not using that uh, key value pair and I said launch. So if you are familiar with the cloud uh, terminology and cloud uh, concepts, so that is one of the major uh, benefit that cloud has that uh, for using, for creating a new machine, you do not have to use for weeks or months. So you see in two minutes, the machine will be ready. So here, if you see the, the status is currently pending. I refresh it. So now you can see the, the machine is ready. 
and if I go to um, if I connect to this machine So oh, you see the machine is, is ready. It's a brand new system uh, that I have just created for my usage. And now it is as good as a, as a, any Linux machine where I, I need to de deploy anything or I need to uh, create anything. I can use this machine. So uh, whenever you use a machine, uh, once you are done with your usage, so I suggest do not uh, keep this machine uh, running, keep on running because uh, after a threshold, uh, it will be chargeable. I mean, after a week or two weeks, uh, I do not know the exact duration, but it will be, it will become chargeable aut automatically. So I suggest once you are done uh, with the usage, so you have two options. Uh, Either you stop the machine or you, you terminate it. So if you are uh, done using it and you know that uh, I need to use it after after a week or something, please stop it. And if you know that, uh, OK, all my done work is done for this particular kind of machine, so please terminate it. It will help you in uh, saving the cost. Okay. It's is it okay for as uh, EC2 machines? Now the type of the machines you want to launch. Uh, when you want to launch a machine, you have different options. And, uh, not only for the Linux, you can create a Mac machine. You can create even create a Windows. Get a Windows machine, Windows 2019 server. You can, uh, if you have your own EMIs, you can import the EMIs also and you can use it. Uh, so you have the different options for that. Is it okay for EC2? Uh, how can we host anything on EC2? Host means? Uh, means, is means uh, what is the EC2 for? just for saving anything ec2 is just like your uh, linux for example the ec2 machine that i have created it's as good as a linux server okay okay you want uh, the question is how can i access that machine yes yes okay so in aws you have uh, different um, endpoints basically so currently the ec2 machines uh, i have created uh, that is without any key pair. Uh, if you have noticed that uh, I have used a uh, option, uh, do not use a key pair. So this machine for this particular kind of machine, you need to access it from the AWS console only. But if you have a machine that can be accessed through a key pair, you can use those keys uh, from other systems to log into this machine and through CLI also for, from the command line interface. Okay. Okay. So let's go to uh, S3 bucket now. So S3, S3 is nothing but uh, it's a storage system in uh, in AWS on the cloud. Uh, okay. Before I move to S3, I just want to show you one more point that I think I didn't capture in the slide uh, you see there are different regions here so uh, each region uh, there are two kind of services uh, AWS is having one that is specific to a region and uh, second that is global to uh, all the regions it's at the AWS account right 
so for uh, for example the ec2 machines these are for a particular region so for example i am in currently in north virginia and let's launch a machine or i just have i, I just have one terminating machine in north virginia uh, if, if i go to for example asia pacific mumbai i do not see a machine here right and if if i launch a machine uh, ec2 machine here so can we uh, launch the same machine which is in another region mm, yes so um, let me just complete it okay. yes so so that is possible so as i said uh, there is a ami possible you can use your own amis also so there are particular steps so you go to one region uh, where you have the machine present you create a ami from the tc2 machine and then you import that ami to another region and on the new region you can use that ami so that is the that, that that those are the steps to create to uh import your ec2 machine from one region to another region so if, if you see in mumbai region uh, it is showing me one machine the ip for that is 31091841 and if i go to north virginia i see a different machine uh, okay I, uh, ip has gone because because we have terminated it so it is like that so uh, did i answer your question i do not know who asked it uh, but did i answer that how you can yes. uh, Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, like as you mentioned, you know, uh, we need to terminate the uh, e EC2 instances. You know, so uh, what if you know, like I have switched on the uh, instance and uh, you know, I'm browsing some other services. So, uh, from the dashboard, can I see like uh, what all what all services are running? I mean, look, I I is it very uh, handy on the dashboard or uh, i need to go to each and every region then i need to uh, switch off turn off the instance uh, you can see the uh, like for example the yeah, for example the services that are specific to a region uh, you want to see all the all the services uh, for example for ec2 if you have different machines in different regions you want to see them in a single dashboard yes 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 for example i have you know like okay. four to five uh, regions and uh, now i have uh, switched on the you know couple of instances so mm -hmm. the, like from where i can know that in, in yeah, yeah. i got your question but for ec2 machines i need to see if it is provided in that way or not because different services are uh, have different kind of dashboards. Okay. Two in two reasons. So in one is not Virginia. Yeah. So this is the global view that you can view here. Okay. And here it, it automatically changed it to the globe. Okay, so let me just terminate it. Okay, um, so when if if I go to S3 now, so you will see that S3 is a global service. So uh, it's not uh, specific to a particular uh, region that you create a bucket, and your bucket should be unique across the AWS account. For example, if you and even it goes uh, true for the bucket names also. If you have a bucket called test, then you cannot create another bucket 
call test again. For example, if I say test, I'm sure somebody is using test bucket. Let's see how this. Bucket with the same name already exists. So if I say bucket zero three. Okay, here now my bucket is created. Okay, and in this bucket, similarly, like uh, as same, we have the properties in the uh, in, a, in a Linux directory or a Windows folder. In the same way, we can provide the permissions uh, for this particular bucket. Who can access it? It can be private. Uh, the objects inside this bucket should they be uh, public or private or the, and even we can use the versioning also uh, at the bucket level or uh, at the object level. Okay, so that's how simple you can use the uh, S3 bucket and you can you can use it uh, for its uh, endpoint name. To the CLI. Okay, if I go back to the presentation, uh, so I am is it to this is three. So, okay, so these are some of the services that I wanted to present you today. Uh, any questions, generic or specific to uh, S3 or EC2? Yeah, hey, Nikhil here. Hello, hello, Nikhil. So, so, if we logged in for registered for first time, so will that uh, free for first year, right? Yes, it was free for uh, one year. Um, it may change in, in future, but as of now, yes, it's for one year, it's free. And even after one year, uh, it is based on the services that we are using. Okay, means Some, somewhat changed for yes, but for the for first year, uh, there are many things that are free. Oh. And if you are planning to uh, do the study, I think one year should be sufficient to play oh. around with it. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? So, uh, Sanjay Praveen here. So, for S3 bucket, as you mentioned, you know, uh, there is only the global region which is available. But uh, I've seen that uh, there are uh, different regions configured, like, you know, uh, Europe or North Virginia or uh, Asia Pacific. So, does it uh, uh, differ in any sense? So, you did not get your question. I mean, the... I mean, as you mentioned, you know, for S3 bucket, there should be only one global region, right? Mm -hmm. So, like other services have, you know, different regions. So I've seen that, uh, you know, while configuring the uh, AWS CLI, so you know, we mentioned the region. So does it uh, varies with the uh, this region? Like, uh, we currently I'm in the Asia Pacific region, so uh, only S3 bucket I will see the Asia Pacific like that. Or is it, 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 for for as yes so that is the difference so for uh, when you are configured your uh, cli so mm -hmm. uh, you know you are mentioning three things the reason the key and the um, the secret key and the access key right yeah. so that the reason is, is also mandatory to mention so uh, for the services which are specific to the reason so you can access only those but for the services that are global you can access it by mentioning any reason so for example s3 if you have created in mumbai and uh, you are using mentioning your region as uh, uh, ireland so then also you can also you can use the access the s3 bucket so that's why it is the global uh, service okay okay 
so okay uh, if there are no no more questions so yeah just do it please okay okay so um if there are no more questions um, i request all of you to create aws account right and just confirm uh, in the group uh, i'm sure all of uh, us are uh, there in the community or community that uh, the, uh, um what's the name i'm sorry i forgot who, who has arranged this meeting uh priya only priya yeah so, so so priya has created a community i'm sure all of us are part of that community yes oh uh, yes yeah. so yes. so yes. once yes. you yeah so once you do that uh, just confirm in the community that the that you are able to uh, create the account and uh, you are able to create some ec2 machines okay Okay, uh, I do not see Priya here. Anybody has any idea how we can stop the recording? Or only Priya can stop it because she has started it.